The floor function of any real number a is the integer number denoted by a bracket such that a bracket is less than or equal to a and a bracket is less greater than a minus 1. For example, pi bracket is 5 and pi bracket is 3, negative 1.5 bracket is negative 2. Find the difference between the largest integer solution of the equation x over 3 bracket is 102 and the smallest integer solution of the equation x over 3 bracket is negative 102. All right, so the first thing I want to do is explain this bracket. Basically, it's the smallest integer less than. So, for example, 5.2 bracket would be 5.2. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 5.0. 5 it's the smallest integer less than the number inside the bracket. Now, so, for example, 4.7 uh, bracket would be 4. It gets a little confusing with negative numbers. So, for example, you have... Um, minus 1.7 bracket, the smallest integer less than that is negative 2. You see what I mean? Sometimes you may want to just draw a number line, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 1.7 to kind of see what is the smallest integer going that way, so going to the left side. Anyhow, just a little introduction on that. So now we have to figure out the largest for this guy and the smallest for this. So let's start with this one here, x over 3 bracket is equal to 102. So if that is the case, that means that what is inside the bracket has to be greater than or equal to 102, right, according to the definition, but it has to be less than 103. So if you have a number line, this is 102, this is 103, and wherever this x over 3 is, it's got to be in between those two. But it could be equal to 102, but it cannot be equal to 103, because if it's equal to 103, then the bracket uh, function would make it 103. So this is pretty much the way to interpret this uh, equation. Okay, so now let's multiply through by 3 and get just x in there. So this is going to be 306, right? Now... For this equation, we want the largest. So the largest of these looks to me, since x is less than 309, the largest integer would be x equal to 308. Yeah. Okay, so we got that one. So in a very similar way, let's tackle this guy here. So this time we have x over 3 bracket is negative 102. So the, the same kind of philosophy here. I always draw a little number line. You don't have to but uh, just to make it easier. So I believe that in this case, um, x over 3, wherever it is, I'm not sure what it is, it's going to be, let me write it out in an equation or inequality format, it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 102, but it has to be less than negative 101. Okay, let's multiply through by the 3, and then we get 303, greater than x, greater than or equal to minus 306. Now for this one, we want the smallest, right? So the smallest. The smallest for this one would be when x is equal to negative 306. Yeah. Okay, so we want, uh, what did they want? The difference. So they want the difference between this number and that number. So that would basically be 308 minus minus 306, and that is 614. And that's your answer. A stone general is a chess piece that moves one square diagonally upward on each move. That is, it may move from the coordinate AB to either of the coordinates A minus 1, B plus 1, or A plus 1, B plus 1. How many ways are there for a stone general to move from 5, 1 to 4, 8 in 7 moves on a standard 8 by 8 chess board? All right, so we are going from here to here, and they have labeled it 5, 1. So that's 5, 1 right there. And then this is 4, 8. All right, so the moves are always diagonal. So, for example, he can go this way. And then once he's there, he goes this way, or he can go that way. So that's kind of the moves. And they're saying it has to be done in seven moves. Okay. Well, in order to go from this 
spot to that spot. It looks like we have to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have to move, I guess, to the left one. Yeah. Okay, so we got to go up seven and go left one. But our moves are not horizontal and, and vertical. Our moves are diagonal. So the only way this would be possible is if you had uh, four moves that were northwest and three moves that are northeast. Yeah, four moves that are north. So let's one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. So that's just one example of four moves northwest and three moves northeast. That would bring you to this spot. Any combination. If you did three northeast first and then four northwest later that would put you in the same spot or you can just do you know zigzag northwest and then southwest uh, northeast and then northwest and you can try it out no matter what the combination is if you have four northwest and three northeast you will eventually get to that four eight so now that we have that concluded we can figure this out so basically when we first start off we can only make north west moves either in this direction or we can make a north uh, east move so we at any point whether it's here or here or here or here 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 so we have one two three four five six seven at any of those seven spots we have two choices right but of those seven choices or of those seven spots, I should say, there's only two choices. There's either a northwest or northeast. So we want four of them to be uh, northwest. So from seven, choose four. That would be my first way of getting this. And then from the rem for the remaining three uh, positions, wherever they are, you want those three all to be northeast. And that takes care of that. So this is basically the math. And seven choose four is 35, and three choose three is just one. So the total answer is 35. And I encourage you to do any combination. You'll notice that no matter what the combination is, as long as you have uh, 4 northwest and 3 northeast, you will end up at this point, 4, 8. In the diagram shown, right angle ABC has side lengths. AC is 3, AB is 4, and BC is 5. Circles centered around the corners of the triangle have the same radius, and the circle with center O ha has area four times that of circle with center P. The shaded area is K pi square units. What is K? All right. So we have to first label this. I'm going to label this guy R, and I believe they all have the same radius, right? Yeah, same radius. So that means this is R, and this is R. And this is R. A whole bunch of R's here. But I think the center O is different. Yeah. That's four times the area of the center P circle. Okay. So we got to be a little bit careful here because the area of a circle is pi r squared. So if this is pi r squared, this one, actually, I probably should use x because we already have some R's there. If area of this is pi x squared, they're saying this is four times, or t four times? Yeah, four times the area, this O circle. So that would mean this would have to be 2x, the radius. Because if you put pi 2x in there, you would get 4x squared, and that's how it ends up to be four times. So that's 2x, and that's 2x. So just got to be a little careful when you try to label the radii of those two circles, that you don't put 4x, because that's not the correct way okay so now we got that established now let's see what we can do here we are given the side length a B I believe right we're given several side lengths so a B is 4 but in my diagram I have that as R plus 2x plus 2x plus R so 4 is equal to 2r plus 4x okay that's helpful and then I have a C which is 3 according to the question, but in my diagram it's r plus x plus x plus r 
So that means 3 is equal to 2r plus 2x. Okay, so that, that's great because now I can figure out the actual numerical value for x and for r, and that will help me. Okay, so however you want to do this, um, I'll just isolate over here. This will be 3 over 2 is r plus x. So that means r is equal to 3 over 2 minus x, and then I can substitute that over here. So 4 would be equal to 2r. Um, or, yeah, whatever, however way you want to do this, 2 times r, which is 3 over 2 minus x plus 4x. So this will be 4, 3 minus 2x plus 4x. So that means 1 is equal to 2x, so x is equal to a half. There, I got a numerical value. Substitute that into here, and that will give me r is 1, I believe. Okay, great. Okay, so now I've got to figure out the area of that shaded region, and then I'll be able to figure out what is that uh, k. Okay. All right, so the, air, the shaded region is this semicircle here, or sorry, this segment up here, this guy, this segment here, and then a, a semicircle, a semicircle, and a quarter circle. Okay, so this is 90 degrees, so that means that this angle and that angle will add up to 90 degrees because some of the angles of a triangle are 90. So that segment up here, I'll just call it 1, and that segment there too, the total angle is 90. So that means those two segments added together would be a quarter of a circle. You understand? So 1 plus 2 is basically a quarter of a circle, so pi r squared divided by 4. Now, r is 1, so that's just pi over 4. Yeah. Okay, then we have these t semicircles. So we have, we'll call this 3 here, and then we'll call this 4, and then we'll call this segment 5. So 3 is just a s uh, semicircle, so that's going to be pi r squared over 2. Now, r in that case is 2x. x is a half, so 2x would be 1. So this is just pi over 2, I believe. Okay, that's good. Now we have to figure out 4. 4 is also a semicircle. It'd be pi r squared over 2. r in this case is x. x is a half. So that looks to me like pi over 8. And then finally, we've got this 5. That's a quarter circle. Pi r squared over 4. And r, in this case, is 1. So that's just pi over 4. And now we have to add up these guys to get the full uh, area of the shaded region. So we got pi over uh, 4 plus pi over 2 plus pi over 8 plus pi over 4. And when you add those up, you get 9 pi over 8. And they're telling me that that is equal to k pi. So therefore, k is equal to 9 over 8. And that's the answer. Determine all integers a for which a over 1, 0, 1, 1 minus a is an even integer. Well, a over... 1, 0, 1, 1 minus a is an even integer. So all even integers are of the form 2n. So I will just call that 2n. Now let's do a little bit of algebra here. So this is going to be 2, 0, 2, 2n minus 2an. Put a, the a's on one side. a plus 2an is equal to 2, 0, 2, 2n. Correct? Factor out the a. I'm going to get 1 plus 2n is equal to 2, 0, 2, 2n. And then isolate for a. And you get 2, 0, 2, 2, n over 1 plus 2, n, like that. Okay, so this makes it a, a little bit help, a little more helpful, I believe. What I'm going to do is I got, I'm going to factor out that 2, 0, 2, 2. I believe it is 2 times 3 times 3, 3, 7. And then you got that n in there. And then you have this 1 plus 2, n. Okay. So that basically means that this 1 plus 2n there has to divide into either 2 or 3 or 3, 3, 7. 
Yeah. Positive or negative? Because it doesn't say anything about being positive or negative. It just says even. So I believe negative numbers are going to work uh, also. So, okay. All right. And any, any type of combination of 2, 3, and 3, 3, 7. Okay, so let's make a little table here. Let's have N. Let's have A. And then we know that 1 plus 2N must divide into this number. This number. And that number I will list. So here we go. All right, let's see. Hopefully it's not too many. So obviously the first choice is 1. And then we got that 2. And then 3. And then combinations, right? 2 times 3 is 6. 3, 3, 7. And then 2 times 3, 3, 7. Uh, or, sorry. 2 times 3, 3, 7. 3 times 3, 3, 7. Oh, 1, 0, 1, 1. That would work. So we would give 674, and then the next one I believe would be 1011, and then finally 2022, and then all the negatives for these guys. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, and so on. Because it doesn't tell me that it has to be positive, so I guess I have to include those negatives. So not a problem. Okay, so let's see what happens. The first one. If 1 plus 2n divides into 1, then that means 1 plus 2n, for example, could equal 1. And if that's the case, n would equal 0. And if n equals 0, then according to this equation, a would equal 0. And that actually is even. Believe it or not, I, I believe that 0 is considered an even number. So that takes care of that. Let's go to the next one. If 1 plus 2n divides into this, so 1 plus 2n is equal to 2, then that means that n is equal to a half here. And if n is equal to a half, and you sub it into this formula here, you will get a equal to 505.5. Well, that's no good, um, because that doesn't match either criteria because a has to be an integer and n has to be even so this one uh, didn't match either of those criteria so let's try 3 if 1 plus 2n uh, divides into 3 that means 1 plus 2n could equal 3 and that would make n equal to 1 and when you substitute n equal to 1 into that equation you'll get a as 674 so that actually does satisfy the criteria that a is an integer uh, sorry yeah a a is an integer and that a is an even integer <laughs> basically all right and um, yeah I guess you just keep going like this and let's see so I'll let you guys do that uh, and when you do it all, the ones that actually give solutions where this equation uh, ends up becoming an even integer are the following ones. When you solve for 337, you get a equal to 108, 1008, I should say. And then, so that one works. And then when you solve for 1001, that gives you a value of 1010. That will work. And the negatives, the negative for negative 1, that gives 2022. Negative 3, which is 1348. And 337, which is 1014. And that one also, which gives you 1012.
and when you calculate the n values those will be the n values and let's see they match all the criteria we want a to be an integer so these will all work out to be integers when you calculate them for these uh, values right there the ones that I've calculated them for these guys and then the calculation for n we will then look at 2n and see if 2n will be even and it will be even because that'll be 2 and all the rest will be even as well that'll be negative 2 so those are the ones that work and that solves this equation